Hello again everyone, it's me Matt, I hope you have an, a wonderful day, thank you for joining me on this main battle tank video. Yes, we are looking at the Leopard 2 main battle tank series. Now some of you are probably asking, Maximus, you've already done a video on the Leopard 2. This is correct, and uh, that video is now no longer available for circumstances of which out of my control. However, today we are going to be going back over it with a fresh video, so hopefully there's a couple of extra points that I was able to research and put in here today that you'll take away from this, and it'll be some new content for you to learn about this beautiful German main battle tank. The Leopard 2 is without a doubt the most important late Cold War European tank and, along with the American Abrams, forms the backbone of NATO armoured forces to this day. Much like the Abrams, it was born in the late 1960s and early 1970s as a result of the ambitious but ultimately unsuccessful MBT-70 or Kampfpanzer 70 American and German Joint Development Programme for the future main battle tank of the Western armies. When the program began to have issues, it became more and more obvious that the vehicle would not only be significantly delayed, but also that it would be extremely expensive and excessively heavy. On the German side, the program was stopped in 1970 after seven years of development, and this was with the cost reaching over $830 million. The Americans would continue developing the concept further, resulting in the XM803 prototype, before finally cancelling their part of the project in favour of the beautiful Abrams. Germany also sought an alternative and upgraded the Leopard 1, which entered service in 1965 to the levels required by the KBZ-70 program. Using the components developed in the program, it made for quite a formidable tank. The first steps towards this were taken as early as 1965, immediately after Leopard 1 entered service in the form of a program called Gilded Leopard. In parallel, the German government began a development project that was independent from the United States of America, which was an experimental development program. Its main objective was to test various technologies of the Kampfpanzer 70 in different technical environments, similar to that of the Gilded Leopard. Two vehicles were eventually built and tested, but they were never intended to be fielded or developed into a full tank. The knowledge gained from the experimental tanks was used to develop and build the first generation of 16 prototypes of Leopard 2, with 16 hulls and 17 turrets. These prototypes were built by Krauss Maffei, AG at the time, which once again was selected as the main contractor between 1972 and 1974. They had different engines, suspensions and weapon system configurations consisting of either the 105mm or 120mm guns. The 105mm calibre was tested in both rifled and smoothbore variants, while the 120mm guns were all smoothbore. The vehicle struggled at first to meet the Bundeswehr's weight requirements, which were later on lifted based on the Yom Kippur War analysis. The analysis proved that thick armour was more valuable than low weight and increased mobility on a main battle tank. To meet the protection requirements, one of the turrets, number 14, aka PT-14 mod, was redesigned as an intermediate step, eventually resulting in what would later become known as the second generation prototypes called the Leopard 2AV. The Leopard 2AV, or austere version, sometimes incorrectly written as American version, was a Leopard 2 prototype, built for comparative trials with the United States on the XM1 prototypes. The groundwork for it was laid on December 11th, 1974, when a Memorandum of Understanding was signed between Germany and the United States regarding armor development in the 1980s. By then, the Americans had already purchased one Leopard 2 prototype, which was actually the number 7 prototype, but it was not possible to simply modify it to meet the American demands for a US MBT, which the United States shared with Germany, and 17 other prototypes were already in production. Interestingly enough though, a number of technologies and ideas from the Prototype 7 of the Leopard 2 were copied in the XM1 development, much to the dismay of Krauss Maffei. Two hulls, number 19 and 20, and three turrets, number 19, 20 and 21, were built in 1976, all using mild steel instead of armoured steel. The Leopard 2 AV had two main new features compared to the earlier prototypes. New hull armour, new turret, based on the lessons learned from the PT-14 mod turret variant. Both features considerably increased the protection level of the vehicle. The vehicle with turret and hull number 19, furthermore referred to as Prototype 19, was equipped with an American fire control system by Hughes, and originally a British Royal Ordnance L7A3 105mm cannon because the XM1 prototypes were armed with the same weapon. 
The Prototype 20 Leopard 2 was armed with the more advanced German EMES-13 fire control system and the same 105mm gun, while the turret, number 21, to be tested on hull number 20, was equipped with the EMES-13 fire control system and the 120mm L44 Rheinmetall smoothbore gun. The Prototype 19 Leopard 2 AB used the Prototype 1500 horsepower MB873 engine adopted from the Kampfpanzer 70. It also had DL 570 tracks from the Gerlach G50 tracks which were used during testing and the HS LW 354 transmission system. It weighed a whopping 55 tons. The XM1 prototypes were not tested head to head with the Leopard 2 AV. The Leopard 2 AV production took a lot longer than expected and Americans didn't want to wait. Prototype 19 along with turret number 20 only got to the United States in August 1976. The tests were conducted on the Aberdeen Proving Grounds in Maryland and lasted until December. The result was that the mobility and firepower were comparable to the XM1, but it was better protected than the Leopard 2 AV. The XM1 was declared the winner after combining the trial results despite the fact that the Leopard 2 AV completed nearly all of its individual test criteria quite well. Germany actually contested the results, but to no avail. The ultimate goal of the earlier memorandum to agree on a number of components that the vehicles of both sides would share failed almost completely. After the tests, Prototype 19 was disassembled, hull number 19 and turret number 20 were returned to Germany, while turret number 19 stayed in the United States, where it was modified to carry the 120mm Rheinmetall smoothbore gun and tested even further. Eventually it returned to Germany as well, where it was modified with a new fire control system and the 120mm smoothbore. Following these tests, Germany decided to go with the 120mm smoothbore along with the new EMES-15 fire control system, developed in cooperation by Hughes and Krupp Atlas Electronique, and approved the first mass production run of 1800 Leopard 2s in September 1977. The first test run vehicle was delivered on October 11th 1978, with the Bundeswehr officially receiving its first Leopard 2 MBT which was fourth built on October 25th 1979. The United States decided to, quote, save the 120mm smoothbore for later M1 variants. It eventually became the standard armament of the Abrams series from the M1A1 variant from 1985 onwards under the designation of the M256. The first production batch of the 1800 initial vehicles was placed between 1980 and 1982, which consisted of 380 Leopard 2s produced by Krauss Maffei. Almost 209 of them were also produced by Maschinenbau Keil and also the Krupp group of 181 of them. The first six vehicles from this batch were delivered to the Munster Tank School in 1979 and 100 were delivered in 1980, 220 in 1981 and the rest of the first batch arrived in 1982, replacing the M48A2 G tanks in active units. These initial batch of Leopard 2s are usually only referred to as Leopard 2 or sometimes Leopard 2A0. The latter designation will be used later when I talk about the confusion between different Leopard 2 variants. The Leopard 2A0 was very well protected. It did not use reactive armor kits, but the majority of its protection was offered by an advanced system of multi-layered space armored plates covering the hull and the turret sides. The sides were covered by thick armored skirts where frontal armor was especially covered with additional protection for the most exposed angles of engagement. Actual armor effectiveness and its layout is still classified. The vehicle wasn't the heaviest either, with a combat weight of around 55 tons. It carried a crew of four men without an autoloader, with the commander, gunner, loader and driver. Due to its power plan, it had a very respectable power to weight ratio, about 27.27 horsepower per ton, allowing it to go as fast as 68 km an hour on straight roads and 31 km an hour in reverse. Fuel consumption was approximately 300 litres per 100 kilometres on road and 500 litres per 100 kilometres on rough terrain. It's safe to say the Leopard stuck by its name as being one of the fastest tanks of its time. The tank of the 2A0 was armed with the excellent Rheinmetall L44 smoothbore gun, moved by the WNA H22 electrohydraulic gun control system. The system was very, very capable. It was fully stabilised and was able to put some serious accuracy downrange. Two types of ammunition were used, the APFSDS T round or the DM33 and the multi-purpose heat round, both by Ryan Mattel. The vehicle carried 42 rounds, 15 in the turret bustle and the rest ready to use. To improve its night firing capabilities, 200 of the first production round vehicles were equipped with the PZB200 low level TV system, 
a stopgap measure before the arrival of the more advanced night firing solutions. The first batch of vehicles which were pre-modernised can typically be recognised by a tall crosswind sensor on the top of the turret, which was removed in later variants. The second batch run was known as obviously the Leopard 2A1. There were a number of differences compared to the Leopard 2A0. The crosswind sensor was obviously removed, but the most important update was that of the thermal sights, replacing the ineffective PZB200. The sights were originally designed by Texas Instruments and were produced by the Carl Zeiss Company as part of the American-German Military Cooperation Program. Apart from that, there were a number of smaller internal changes such as the ammo rack design, external crew comm system headsets and the sides of the turret etc, but not huge changes. The third production run, Batch 3, consisted of 300 slightly modified Leopard 2A1s. They are not easy to distinguish between Batch 2 Leopard 2A1s as the changes are very small, for example elevation of the commander's panoramic sights by 5cm. With the third production run nearly complete, it was decided to improve the original Batch 1 vehicles or the Leopard 2A Zeros to also carry the new thermal sights. This program ran from 1984 to 1987 in parallel with the partial third and fourth fifth production runs. The crosswind sensor was also removed with the third production run changes as added. These modified Leopard 2A Zeros were designated the Leopard 2A2s. The fourth production run consisted of 300 more vehicles and these were based on the Leopard 2A1 but they received the new SEM 8090 VHF radios and slightly different exhaust grills. Along with these changes, the Batch 4 vehicles received the new bronze green leather brown and tar black camouflage pattern. Additionally, ammunition supply hatches were welded shut for protective reasons and it turned out they could be damaged upon being hit, causing the seals to leak and making the vehicle impossible to pressurise for NBC protection. These modified Leopard 2A1s were designated the Leopard 2A3s. The fifth production run was Batch 5 and marks the introduction of the Leopard 2A4. This Leopard 2 variant was the first major modernisation of the vehicle. The main difference from previous models was the introduction of a digital fire control system as well as a new explosion suppression system which was to increase crew survivability. The vehicle also had a slightly overworked suspension with the second and third return rollers moved by one road wheel to the back. At this point, nearly a decade after the approval of the November 1977 plan, the 1800 vehicles that had been built have been made in five different production runs. The success of the vehicle and the need to replace the Leopard 1A4s and the 10th Panzer Division caused the German military to reconsider the initial number and a new order of 6th production runs was made in June 1987. The production batch 6 ran from 1988 to 1989 with 150 more vehicles being built. These were modified to Leopard 2A4s with the new Dial 570FT tracks, different box shaped frontal sections for the side skirts, maintenance free batteries and a new paint scheme. Leopard Batch 6 was immediately followed by the 7th production run, and 100 Leopard 2A4s which were pretty much identical to Batch 6, and finally the 8th production run of 75 vehicles from January 1991 to 1992. The Batch 8 vehicles were slightly modified yet again. The biggest visual change was the muzzle reference system mirror on the right hand side of the gun, as well as a different design for the vehicle side skirts. The final Leopard 2A4 batch of 8 was delivered in the Bundeswehr in March 1992, ending Leopard 2 production for Germany with 2,125 of these vehicles built. Around the same time, batch 1 to 4 Leopards were improved drastically by introduction of new radios and new track systems. They were also given the ability to fire the DM-33 Tungsten Rod APF-SDS round. These improved vehicles were also renamed Leopard 2A4s, but they weren't. For example, given the fire suppression system of the original 2A4s. As a result, there were several subtypes of the Leopard 2A4, despite all vehicles bearing the same designation, however. All German Leopard 2s have been improved to the 2A4 standard by 1993, making it the most widely used Leopard 2 model to this day. Production numbers are still to this day not final though. The Leopard 2 was a successful export item and was also built, either in Germany or locally assembled, for several other countries. Some countries opted to simply purchase the Leopard 2A4s from German stocks. The vehicles were sold primarily as the early batch of 1-4 tanks, modernised to 2A4 standards. Apart from different countries, the former or current users of the Leopard 2A4 include Austria, Canada, Chile, Denmark, Finland, Indonesia, Norway, Poland, Singapore, Sweden, Turkey, to name but a few. But of course the Leopard 2A4 was still in dire need of upgrading. Being it's the most popular common variant of the export of this vehicle, it is still being used today, recently in combat in Turkey against the Islamic State and terrorists and Kurdish separatists within Syria. 
Several were lost to anti-tank guided missiles, although whether that was due to their obsolescence or due to the poor tactics is really a matter of debate. In any case, the operational use of these vulnerable machines did highlight their weaknesses. After all, the first Leopard 2A4s did roll out from the assembly lines in 1985. One way to upgrade the Leopard 2A4 potential was to add additional armour along with other items for the Leopard 2A5 program, such as new internal spall liners protecting the crew against splinters, new electronic gun control mechanism and stabiliser, modified PERI R17 commander's sight with a thermal imager, a raised EMES 15 fire control system position, and EMS 15 FCS housing received additional armour also. Many countries opted to upgrade their Leopard 2A4s to the 2A5 standard, starting from the early mid-1990s all the way up to 2005. The development then continued with the Leopard 2A6 variant, and then ultimately the Leopard 2A7. However, the official German upgrade is not the only thing available on the market. IBD Dasselnroth unveiled its own commercial armour upgrade in 2007. This upgrade pack was called Evolution. The development later passed through into Rheinmetall, and the later variants were referred to as Revolution. Evolution and Revolution were both specifically intended to upgrade the Leopard 2A4. A similar upgrade kit intended for the Leopard 2 variants called Evolution 2 was unveiled in 2012. Not too much is known about the Evolution kit and its derivatives. The goal of the Advanced Modular Armor Protection, or MAP, was developed by IBD Dessenroth and is prepared to really give the vehicle more low intensity conflict capabilities by making it more resistant to infantry carried threats, including some mid ranged anti tank guided missiles. Evolution armor is modular and can be upgraded depending on the intensity of the conflict. The additional armor blocks consist of composites, aluminium or aluminum titanium alloys with steel alloys and ceramics, although the exact performance is obviously classified. So it's safe to say folks that this vehicle really has gone through quite the transitional phase throughout its history, whether it be from the bare bones standards working with the Americans and the multitude of different prototypes that it was placed upon, through to the batches of vehicles that are actually built and subsequently upgraded as they were released. The Leopard 2 is a formidable main battle tank, one of my favourites for sure. I really do love the Leopard. It really does give me a sense of German engineering pride. They do know how to make their tanks very well, folks. And of course, many of you have seen the footage of Leopards being blown up in Syria and such. Uh, but let's be very clear here. It's very difficult to judge upon a tank uh, when it's placed in environments where it's not given everything it's designed to really have uh, in the environments that it's placed in. We're talking about advanced anti-tank guided missile systems being placed against vehicles that are not being crewed by teams that know how to work them very well, and they're not being uprated in armor to protect them from such threats. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video, folks. Please leave me a like and a comment if you enjoyed it. If I did make any mistakes, I do apologize. Please let me know. Um, as I did say before, this is a secondary video of the original Leopard video. Unfortunately, that video was removed for circumstances out of my control. Um, but uh, hopefully you did enjoy. If you want to support my channel, please go check out my Patreon page. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who has been donating towards that page. It really does mean a lot to me. Also, if you check the description box below, you'll find my merchandise store, my Facebook, Discord, and all the other fun little links that you can check out there. If you don't like using Patreon, you're more than welcome also to check out my PayPal that you can actually send donations through to. And if you wish to, I would really appreciate it, and thank you again for everyone who has been helping me out. Have a wonderful day, everyone. All the best. Bye-bye.